Hey everyone out there on YouTube, uh, making a new video on something that I get a lot of questions about and that is, does my shock need nitrogen? Uh, a lot of people are going to release the nitrogen out of it and be like, oh, I guess I had nitrogen in it. And they don't have a way to fill it. But this is very easy to see if you're missing nitrogen, maybe you're missing oil. And I'll explain both of those here. So let's get to it. Well, I'm going to show you two examples. One is going to be a nitrogen problem, and the other shock is going to be an oil problem. Um, you can see last night we had a bunch of snow. I don't know what we had, but I bet we had 10 inches of snow or better, so I've been out scooping all morning. Well, So, time to get some work done. Um, I figured this is going to save me some time. Uh, I can refer customers to this video and then they're going to see without messing up their shock. So as you can see this shock here I'm going to push it down and they're really hard to push down. You need to take the spring off first and put it upside down in a vise just like I'm doing here. So You see how hard that is to push down and you see the shock pops right back up. So that tells me this shock is perfectly good, no missing nitrogen, and no missing oil. Well, let's go ahead and release the oil with this Schrader valve, and then we'll see what happens. Now, this shock is easier to push down, and guess what happens? It stays down. Now it feels really good. You can feel oil flowing through it. I just rebuilt this shock for a pro rider. Uh, we're going to be running TT with this shock. So I just revalved it and put new oil in it. And we also shortened it up just a hair for our special linkage that we run for TT. That's our linkage we designed in house. Um, all right. So now let's go ahead and put some nitrogen in it. And you're going to see. Make sure our nitrogen is on. And this is another myth. Um, a lot of people think that you need this setup right here. And what it is, it's I'm able to you see it's got dust on it because it's been sitting for a little while because you don't need it. Um, this is able to open the Schrader valve and then you can close off your nitrogen pressure and you can open your Schrader valve back up and it's not going to release all your nitrogen out of your shock. You don't need that. When you do this, just a tire, simple tire valve, um, if you do it right, you won't lose any nitrogen. It's real easy. Same thing as putting air in your tire. So we're going to watch this shock. I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. And I'm going to back up and we're going to watch with this shock whenever I put nitrogen in it. Look at that. It popped back up. And I can hear by the sound if I lose any any nitrogen out of that shock. So now when I push down on the shaft again, it's going to pop back up. Pretty simple, right? So this shock has nitrogen, it has oil. Well, how do I know if it needs oil? Well, that's pretty simple. Here's a shock that there's no oil in. Real easy. This is what a shock does without oil or let's say it has partial oil what will happen then you'll hear air bubbles in there squishing back and forth um, especially what it'll do it'll return up to say there and then the last part it'll it'll shoot back out so you know you're low, low on oil then most likely you're gonna have to find a problem with that the problem is usually gonna be um, that the seals have failed uh, also, I've seen where this fitting down here has come loose, has been hit on something. Um, you could have hit a line on your chain. I see that a lot too on the uh, reservoir line. So I hope this video helps out everyone and I can refer people to this.